Hey everyone, in my last video I showed you how to make your character fall and stop falling when they hit their platforms or when they're on the ground. But when we ended that video we had a small problem. Our player would stop when he hits the ground but it also um, stops when our player is in the ground. So we've essentially have this problem where our player is stuck in the ground and now we need to figure out a way to take this player and if he's in the ground move him up so that he's on top of the ground. So in this video, we'll talk about how to improve our falling code and how to kind of make that happen. So again, we're doing most of the code in the player class. And again, we're trying to keep our code very organized by having lots of small methods that we call in the act method. So basically what I wanna do is after our player touches the ground, I wanna move him up on top of the ground. So let's make another method to help us out. So at the bottom of my program, make sure I'm inside this last curly brace here. I'm gonna give myself some room and I'm gonna create another method. I'm gonna write public void, let's call this move to ground. And this method is actually gonna need a parameter for this to work. And the kind of parameter or the information that this method needs to work is an actor called ground. And now let's put some curly braces. So for this method to work, I need to, you know, take some information and do something with it. So kind of similar to what we did with on ground is the first thing I'm going to do is measure how tall the ground is. So I'm going to go to int ground height, and that equals ground dot get the image dot get the height. And again, I'm putting this integer in this method because this will measure the specific piece of ground you are touching so that you know um, how far up to move it. Because if you look here, I'm taking the ground actor that we're touching and I'm actually measuring its image right here. The next thing we're going to do is create an integer called new y. This is where we want to move our character to so his feet aren't stuck in the ground. So we're going to make that equal the ground that he's touching. That's this actor right here. We're going to make that uh, get the y coordinate of that ground. And we're going to move this character up. So we're going to subtract it. And we're going to, again, because Greenfoot measures things from the middle of it, we have to get half of the ground's height and we have to get half of our character's height. So what we're going to do is we're going to say in parentheses, ground height, so how tall the ground is, plus the image we're using, so we're going to say get the image dot get the height. And we're going to close this up, kind of do some order of operations here, and then divide it by two. So this is the height of the ground plus the height of the image that we're using, our character. And we're going to add those together and divide it by two. And then what we're going to do is just set the location of our character we're going to put get x because we don't want to move him left or right but we're going to pop him up on the ground so we're going to write new y here so this is his new y coordinate it's going to literally move him up from here up into the ground or above the ground so now that we have this fancy new method we actually need to figure out where we're going to call it and the best place to call this is right after we figure out if we're on the ground. So we're actually gonna call this method in here. So we need to edit our on ground code. I think the easiest way to do that is to actually switch our logic around a little bit here. So instead of this, if, we're, if the ground is not null, let's make it if the ground is null. So if the ground is null, if we're not on the ground, if we're not touching the ground, we're not on it. So we're gonna change this from true to false. And for the else, that means we are on the ground. So let's do two things for the else. Let's add some curly braces. And then here, let's add our method, move to ground, 
And then this method, again, requires a parameter. It requires some information. And basically, what I want to do is say, hey, if we're on the ground, let's take this ground that we're touching and run this method. So I'm going to call ground right here. So right here, let's type in ground. And we're going to put a semicolon at the end here. Let's press compile. So this code here um, should work. Um, one more improvement that I like to add to my games is right here in the fall method is I like to give my um, characters basically what's called some terminal velocity. I like to make it so that um, at some point they don't gain so much gravity speed that they pass right through the ground. So I like to just limit that by saying if the vertical speed is less than or equal to and then a number like 10 or 12. So basically what this means is he can't be accelerating forever. And we don't have to change anything in our act method because we're still using check fall. So now we've just kind of added another layer of logic to this. So let's press compile. And now let's add our player and put him above the ground and press run. And he falls down and he didn't pop up all the way right here. So we have a problem. And that's because we didn't change this to true. All right, so make sure that when we have Booleans, we have a false and a true condition. So let's try this again. Drop this player in here, press run. And now he pops up into the ground. So basically what's happening here is if he's on the ground, it's gonna measure where he is and pop him above it. So even if we place him in the ground by accident and we press run, pops him up into the ground. So that's how you can improve your falling code in your platformer game.